Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Vectorworks tutorial and today we're going to carry on the project that we started in the last video and we're going to be looking at basically bringing our site plan in, so site survey. We're also going to be looking at how to create nice photo sheets in Vectorworks and also mood boards as well. Um, it's something that I like to do at the beginning of a project and you'll see why. Finally, we'll look at a few other nice tips and talk about 3D terrain modeling. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video and looking forward to sharing my project as I develop it with you. So thanks for watching and enjoy. Bye bye. And if you've not seen my first part, uh, please watch this and we're going to carry on with a beginning of how to start setting up our project. So in the last video, you saw how I very rapidly set up uh, some location plans, a block plan and a site plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to carry on with this process. Now we're going to go on to set up the site survey and also a photo sheet and a few other things as well. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just go to my layers and I'm going to go to a survey layer. And at the moment you can see there's nothing on this layer, so it's just blank. So what I've already done is gone through the process of importing my DWG file for the survey. And that's very straightforward. All we did was drag and drop the file like we did in the very first video. And just whatever you do, just make sure that when you kind of bring your classes in, you basically uh, go to your classes and you prefix them with the name survey. Now, if you forget to do this, just a great little tip for you is to go to batch renaming under the tools menu. Because what you can actually do in here is add a prefix. For example, let's just pretend I call this site hyphen and you can see it would prefix all those class names in one very simple operation. Okay, I actually don't want to do that. Let's remove, but that would be how it would work. There's also loads of other cool stuff you can do in here like batch naming resources and symbols and all sorts of stuff. But I will definitely get into this in a later video. But if you've not tried batch rename, it's very, very powerful. Okay, so here we've got the uh, survey, as you can see. And if I click onto my visibility tool, you can see that it's really nicely classed up. So this was a survey prepared by FOSS surveys in the UK, very good surveyors that I've used a few times. Um, now, the survey is geographically located at this point in time. For this particular project, I don't need that to be the case. I'm quite happy to use what I call local origins. So what I'm going to do is select all of this information. I'm just going to go to my copy command, command C. And now I'm going to go to my design file and we're going to paste it in. But what I would actually quite like to do is set the scale of this particular layer to be the same as the um, OS base. Let's do 1250 and not tick all layers. OK, let's definitely not tick this right now. Now that will enable me, if I want to, to go down and turn on the OS base drawing. And if I go to uh, layer options, show snap modify others, you can see the heliodons in there as well. Let's turn those off. I should be able to see the site layer either visibly or just grayed out in the background. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is basically, uh, to begin with, I'm just going to click and paste in the information. And I'm going to use the group command or command G just to group it temporarily. Okay, now you can see the building that I can use to align to my OS base. Okay, so this is a method where you can basically align to that OS base drawing. Do bear in mind that the OS base is never as accurate as the survey, and there will always be a few minor discrepancies as well. Okay, but that looks pretty close um, for now. I'll choose that reference point. Um, it may be better to choose this front reference point here. You can see the angle is ever so slightly different, but that should be okay in terms of actually snapping the building in the right position. Okay, so let's make the other layer a bit more visible. Um, so hopefully now, it's really nice, we can see the OS base overlaid with our site, which is the key thing here. Okay, great. So I can now kind of turn off the um, OS base. I'll finish with that for now. And basically now I can go off to create my first site drawing. So what we'll do, we'll go to View, Create Viewport, and I can pre-select my um, site plan. Or if I want to, I can just create a brand new drawing for the site survey. Okay, so I think for the site plan, I'll actually put it onto the site plan here. Okay, and we won't create a drawing label for this. Let's click OK. 
So let's tick yes. Now you see that it's landed on my site drawing and this drawing is at 1 to 200 scale. So if I change the scale of that survey to 1 to 200, again, you'll notice that it's got the base plan underneath. So let's just kind of quickly move it to that position. Okay, fantastic. Now what I can do is um, I can literally delete the old OS base drawing. And now, of course, now I can see clearly where the site is. Um, I'll just reposition my building and viewport a bit more appropriately. Fantastic, it's looking good. So I think the next thing to do is to crop it. So we can double click, uh, go to crop, and let's put in a crop around the important bits of the site, just so we've kind of got that site cropped there. And let's exit. Fantastic, so just to review, previously we had the block plan drawing, which we'd kind of turned into a site plan because we hadn't yet imported the survey. And now we've gone to that extra level of detail of actually having the site itself. Okay, so that's a really important thing to do. Um, and if I do want to, I can not only show you the crop visibly, which is quite nice. If I do want to turn off some of these construction lines, then um, I can basically just go into my classes and possibly just turn off those grid lines just to create a nice clean drawing for the site. Well, the next thing we're going to do is look at how to create some site photos. So I'm going to basically go onto a blank layer of my sheet and you'll notice that I've actually got a bunch of site photos over here. I've already had a quick sort through these. Um, so what I thought would be useful would to be to get all the ones that I want to use tagged just so I don't have to kind of sort through those again. So if I sort them by tag, I can simply select all the photos that I want to bring in in one go. And a really nice little technique is just drag and drop those to bring them in. Now, when you import them, um, you do have the option here to reference them. And this is quite useful because not only will it keep the file size a lot smaller, it does mean that if I do any changes or updates to those photos, they'll update here. So I'm gonna go ahead with that to begin with. And yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to basically click OK. If I did want to, I could apply things like image effects as well. Let's not do any of that right now. Click OK. So we're going to have to click OK a number of times. So I'm going to use the keyboard to do this. Just click OK multiple times. You can see those images referencing in one by one. And these were taken on an iPhone, actually, my new iPhone. And I'm really, really pleased with the kind of quality of the images. Um, so when I go to site these days, you know, as well as the big camera, I often kind of just manage with the iPhone. It looks great. So you're going to notice that all of the photos landed on top of each other. So if we select all of them, you'll see there's 10 of them. Okay, so the trick here is to scale them using the scale objects command. Okay, and I think I'm going to need to scale them down by about, let's say, 0.5 to begin with. Click OK, and that the good thing is this will scale all of them in one go. You know what, I might go a little bit more than that because I want them all to be a little bit smaller. Let's just go um, another 0.8 on top of the 0.5 we just did. That should be OK. Brilliant, OK, now here's a really nice little technique. What you can do is basically space out your photos. OK, we know that there's a, a bunch in there. Um, so let's just drag those out of the way. So let me show you how this works. So really what I want to do is organize my photos on my sheet. Okay, and let's just get this one snapped in. And you can see that, again, they're a little bit too big for the image as such at the moment. So great little tip here. If we group those, Command G, we can now scale them down just together. Okay, and then we can ungroup them once again. And this basically means it's very easy for us to basically get all of those photos li nicely lined up together. So this is a little process that I would move through just to take a few minutes to kind of get my uh, photos looking great on the sheet, all looking pretty good. Um, I still want to do a few couple of changes here. So I've got them all grouped at the moment. Let's ungroup them. Fine, just get them all ungrouped. And what I'm going to do is just get them spaced out a bit more nicely on the sheet. So a great little tip here is to select those three. And we can do a command called align and distribute. Okay, and with this command, not only can I align those photos up on the top, which is okay, I can most importantly distribute them with equal spacing and click okay. And that will just equalize the gaps between. So that's really nice. Now I can just drag my other photos across very rapidly. It doesn't take a second to do that. 
And just to make kind of look even nicer, what I tend to do is just use a rectangle, okay, with no fill, and just rotate that round, and basically just kind of use that to divide those photos, just to kind of give them a bit of breathing space and increase the definition. So that looks fantastic. There's my photo sheet done in just a matter of moments. Um, so in this little tutorial, we've now finished off our site plan. That's ready to go. And we've got our site photos. Excellent. So this is how you prepare ready to start some work on your initial project. I've actually been to site this morning and I managed to take some really nice videos. So I'm going to show you how to add videos to your Vectorworks file. Now to do this, we go to the Dims and Notes palette. And there's a very cool tool here that I really love called the hyperlink tool. Um, so basically I can click and add this to my file. And you can see at the moment I've got it uh, set to open my website. So for example, if I hold the command key down, I get a finger and if I click, that will basically open up a link to my website. And if there's, you know, if you're interested to have a look on the training page, you can find about the kind of types of training I do on site, in-house and online. So I'd love to work with you and do some training um, if you're interested. Anyway, let's get back to Vectorworks. So what I'm going to do is actually edit this link. Okay, and let's just call this open video one. And you'll notice that there's lots of different actions that you can get it to do, like open documents or launch applications. So if I open a document, I can now browse. And if I just go through to my movie file, there's one, I can click open. Okay, let's click okay. And now let's hover over it and basically click on the command key to open up that video file, just so I can basically pan around and get a really nice view of the site directly from Vectorworks, if you like. And it's really useful because we can sort of pan around and that just really helps us set the site in context. Duplicate this link here and to the center. Click the edit button. Let's change that to open video two and I'll click browse. Let's go down and set our next video. Click OK. And let's just try this one to hold command down and click. And there we can see another video that I've just basically uploaded. So I normally do this as well as the photos. It's just nice to have these um, all in hand. If there's any other documents like, uh, I don't know, engineers uh, specifications or calculations later in the project, I'll also add those as well in, in one place. Uh, now, of course, if you PDF these, the links will only really work if they're web links. So open a web page will work. Um, not obviously unless you have the file. So my final one, let's just go down and get this final video here and link to that one too. So you can see within a matter of moments, I've now got three videos embedded in my project and I can kind of just remind myself what the site was like on this particular day. Uh, lovely, lovely spring day with the overgrown <laughs> site, as you can see. So really, really good way to get that extra bit of context. Excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and let's move on to the next feature creating mood boards in Vectorworks. And this is done in the same way that I've just shown you by bringing in images. I don't necessarily reference them all and they're all bitmaps. And by the way, you can also uh, double click and if you do want to, you can just sort of crop just to kind of reduce the size of that image a little bit and then exit the crop as well. Um, you'll notice you can also bring in the attributes of the image and if you do need to, you can kind of compress them and bring them down in size a little bit and you can do various levels of compression. So if the file size is getting a bit too big, let's just have a quick look with file info, then um, that's okay, 11 megabytes, you could squeeze it down if needed. Okay, so I've got a couple of mood boards here, you can see using my sheets. And what I tend to do is I like to assemble slightly different mood boards depending on the project, um, but just kind of, kind of show the client some initial ideas, even at an early stage of the project. And I find this really helpful in just getting a feel for the kind of details and contemporary materials they may or may not like. Um, and it saves quite a lot of uh, design work and experimentation later in the design process. And I also find it really helpful and just inspiring to see um, other people's work and sort of take some inspiration from that. So you can see I've got a few sheets assembled here. Um, I'll be showing these to the client and just to kind of flesh out some of the kind of ideas and things that they might like as well. So there's some interiors that I've also done and these are really nice just to kind of see some different combinations of materials and the potential sort of interior finishes that we might choose on certain projects. So yeah, if you're not doing Vectorworks mood boards, I'd really encourage it. It's an absolutely brilliant system 
very easy to do and very satisfying. Okay, so I think we've got nearly everything we need to go ready on the project now, apart from the 3D sites terrain. So the only other thing left to do is to go over to my 3D site model and I'm just going to kind of have a look at this data already. So this was the 3D site that I got from the surveyor. And what I've now done is basically turn that into a site model. Okay, now I'm not going to go through this right now in this video, but if you do want to see this, watch my other videos on the channel and you'll notice how I create site models. So here we go. I've got my survey site model. Let's just bring that in. And this is the kind of thing that you're going to get on the site model. Basically, turning that three-dimensional data, those contours, into slope data. And this will be really useful later in the project when I actually come to model my three-dimensional project. Uh, I'll have all the contours I need. And if I do need to, I can easily go in and tell you what, let's just add, uh, let's just have one contour every 250 mil. Okay, and let's have four, four for a major contour, just so we can get a feel for how slopey that site is. And you can see there's quite a bit of gradient down on the site now. So it's very, very useful to be able to kind of overlay the site plan with the site survey in 3D as well. Excellent, everybody. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I've really enjoyed making it and I'm ready to start the next stage of my design process. So if you are new around here, please make sure you subscribe and join the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next ones. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.